Forty days to wonder, forty days to die some, forty days to grow stronger as faith brings hope in the gates of hell. Jubilee is over, but grace is far from her. In the hearts of the faithful, broken on the wheels of love. Cause in the desert of temptation, lies a form of true conversion. For springs of living water, drown and refresh you. As the Jordan pours out change, the true self is all that remains. For springs of living water bind to break you, bind to break you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of. Then, as we call it, Letare Sunday, we offer this month to the Lord for all our patients, especially for all who are sick and for those who are homebound. Brothers and sisters, let's acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. So, Almighty God, unto you, my brothers and sisters, we have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my thought, through my form, through my long speak this form. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. and people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. 
In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sin. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with his saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see and they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was much division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they saw the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. 
So a second time he called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to be one of his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to him, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do not see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see. So your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus. We heard in our response of some, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose, beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in a dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are my side with your rod and staff that give me courage. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Jesus is our good shepherd who laid down his life for each one of us. He is victorious over death. He conquered death for us. He promised us resurrection. There are two kinds of death physical and spiritual death, the death of our soul or eternal death or eternal separation from God. Our life here on earth is temporary. We all will experience physical death, but our soul will continue to live with God. And on the last day, He will resurrect each one of us with our body, like the glorified body of Jesus. Our life here on earth is a preparation for the next life, for eternal life in heaven. God's plan for our salvation has two steps. By baptism, we are saved from original sin, and we are saved from, to become children of God. By baptism, we promise to reject Satan and all his lies, 
so that we can truly live as children of God. We are reaching the spiritual darkness of sin, so we can live as children of light, the light of faith, the light of truth, and the light of beauty and goodness of our Lord Jesus Christ. Dr. Grant Petrie had this uh, reflection about our gospel today. He said that Pope Leo the Great once said, what was visible in our Savior has passed over into his mysteries, in other words, into his sacraments. The ancient Christians referred to the sacraments as the mysteries. So in other words, the visible miracle of Jesus healing the man born blind points forward to the invisible miracle of what is going to accomplish in one of the sacraments, which is the sacrament of baptism. In ancient Christianity, one of their favorite names of the sacrament of baptism was the sacrament of illumination or enlightenment, whereby we would receive spiritual illumination to be able to see the truths of faith through the gift of faith. Now, if we take that baptismal meaning back to the story of the blind man, we will see its deeper meaning. For example, when the disciples say, Who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus says, Neither. Why? Because the spiritual blindness of the man is like a sign or a symbol of original sin. Original sin is a state in which we are born. It's not the result of our own personal sin. It's not even the result of our parents' personal sin. It is the result of the original fall of Adam and Eve. So when we talk about original sin, it is not an actual sin for which we are culpable. We are not blamed for it. It's a state in which we are born, just like the man born blind. So the man's blindness is a symbol of original sin. Original sin is not something like a stain. It is an absence of something, like the absence of sight. It's the loss of the original holiness and the original grace that our first parents had when they were created by God in communion with Him, in perfect communion with Him before the fall. So the man born blind represents all of us born into a state of original sin. And then Jesus, the Savior, comes to restore our sight. So when he takes his feet and he makes clay from the earth and he gives the man eyes who was born without sight, what is he doing? Well, he's inaugurating a new creation because baptism that's what happens to us. In baptism, that's what happened to us. Jesus makes us into a new creation. The one who made the world, the one who made Adam, now makes us anew and gives us sight. Not to see earthly realities, it is not about restoring physical sight to us. It's about giving us supernatural sight so that we can see the truths of faith and we can see the mysteries of faith, especially the mystery of His Incarnation, that God has become man out of love for humanity. So that's the truth of what happens to us in baptism. We receive the gift of faith and now we are able to see. St. Ambrose writes about this gospel, in one instant, we see the power of Jesus' divinity and the strength of His holiness. As the divine light, He touched this man and enlightened him. As priest, by an action symbolizing baptism, He wrote him in, he wrote in him His work of redemption. The, one, the only reason Jesus mix, mixing clay with the spit of and smearing it on the eyes of the man born blind, wants to remind you that he who restored man to health by anointing his eyes with clay is the very one who fashioned the first man out of clay. 
and that this place our friends that can receive the life of eternal life through the sacrament of baptism. You too should come to Solom. Let Christ wash you and then you will see. Come and be baptized. It is time. Come quickly and you too will be able to say, I was blind and now I see. In of God. Coronavirus or physical death is not dreadful. Spiritual death is. So my dear brothers and sisters, to avoid spiritual death, let us heed the advice of St. Paul from our second reading. By living, a child, by living as children of light and taking no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Let us not just expose the darkness, but let us remove any darkness in our hearts through the sacrament of confession. Let us be reconciled with God and one another, and be not afraid, for we are assured of eternal life when we are living in the state of sanctifying grace, truly living as children of God. By exposing our sins during confession, we receive light and mercy from the Holy Spirit. Then we can truly see as God sees and lead His light to others as we shine with His love and mercy in our lives. Then we can truly sing Amazing Grace How sweet the sound The Savior rest Like me I once was lost But Stand together, we profess ourselves, our, we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of me. Consumption to the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated of Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And I sit at the right hand of the Father, shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds as the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the Father sent His Son to heal and redeem us, we now ask Him to hear and answer these prayers, that they may be comforted in any affliction. For the Church, may God help us remain faithful to all of His commandments and to grow in the fullness of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our elected officials. May the Lord grant them the fortitude to remain true to His justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may the healing power of Jesus come upon them and bring them comfort and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those gathered here. May the Holy Spirit increase us as a spirit of conversion and openness to His works in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all of those who have died. May they, through the mercy of God, rest in the fullness of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those infected by the coronavirus in all of our world, that God will be with us. Help us to get through this and help us to see good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of our own special intentions, which we mention now to God in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Merciful God, we know that you are the giver of all good things. Hear and answer these prayers that we bring to you today through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Set your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good, the good of all His holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revert them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has, he has led the human race that walk in darkness into the regions of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. 
Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, as we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. intercession in your presence with the life of unfailing help 
May the sacrifice of our reconciliation with Christ the Lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world. The place to confirm in faith and charity the proven church on earth with your servant Francis of Hope and Thomas of Bishop, Edward of Zaxilari, and all the clergy. Remember also, our brothers and sisters, there are Bishop, all the clergy and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself or your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you and your passing from this life, give kind of millions to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all bring God a sign of peace. May this be the name of the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Savior of the sins of the world.
And love you in all sincerity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Keep life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now we have a message from Deacon, if you want to sit down. I just want to tell everybody how much I miss you and hope everybody is safe. Until we see each other again, please accept my virtual hug, and I will make up for this down the road. But please be safe. Please know that we miss you. We thank you for being part of our parish. If there's anything that we can do, we are here for you. I don't know if you say something, too. We're so happy to um, celebrate this Mass with you, and we're praying for you all. And we know that um, the Lord is with us, and at the end of this, um, the Lord will, will help us to learn what we need to learn. God be with you, and God bless you. Thank you. Let's pray the angel of the, angel of the Lord, and Mary, and she consents in the house of the Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among the women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. 
Please be with us today according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our death. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. We may be made worthy of the consciousness of Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you, O Lord, you grace into our hearts the great incarnation of Christ, your Son, who has made known the divinity of an angel, the virus of passion for us, who brought to the glorious resurrection to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As we force the beginning of this time, and shall be world without end. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us, immaculate heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, prayer to Saint Michael, Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. We are protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God be with him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of Heaven, the most, by the power of God, God cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who perform upon the world, singing the righteous souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your love, the perfect sacrifice of praise to God above. Thank you for the gift, thank you for the price of losing everything to gain eternal life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your joy. Oh 